What happened when she was taken into Pharaoh's palace? What is Pharaoh doing with her? Just like, nice, that's a pretty woman. Now she's good looking. Thanks guys, send her back to her brother now. No thanks guys, that's it. All I needed to do is just take a gander. Hey folks, welcome to Joel Reads Bible. I'm Joel, I'm reading the Bible. Every episode is another chapter of the Bible. We're reading the whole entire thing, every single verse, every single word. We're doing it in the New International Version, which is the most popular of all the versions, so it's gotta be the, the right one. God wouldn't let the most popular of all versions be the wrong version. And if you think he would, then you do not believe in the sovereignty of God. But I don't know if I do yet either, because we're only in Genesis chapter 12, and we haven't really seen God be particularly sovereign. And you can read along, by the way. I'm not pulling any fast ones. But please subscribe, like the videos, and as we go along, uh, I sometimes make little comments, cute little jokes, you know? I don't mean anything by them, but uh, if you think I missed a joke or you hated one of my jokes, just leave it in the comments or just share the video on Facebook and be like, I hate this. Just share, share the videos. All right, Genesis chapter 12. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. Lucky guy. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, <laughs> I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. That's the, that's the nicest thing God has said yet, that he's planning on blessing all the peoples on earth through Abram's nation, which is the nation of Israel, I believe. I don't want to jump ahead, but I do believe it's going to be the nation of Israel. And frankly, I do feel blessed by the people of Abram. They make some amazing movies. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. All right, Lot, you can come, but you better behave. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, barren, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. It's interesting that they took the people they had acquired in Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they accumulated, and the people they acquired. It's interesting wording. There is an issue with slavery in the Bible. What does it mean to acquire people? In my life, I might say, oh, I've acquired some friends. I've acquired family, I acquired a wife, I acquired children. Do we use that kind of language? So what does it mean that he acquired people? We may find out later on in, in Genesis or in future chapters. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At the time, the Canaanites were in the land annoying. Why are the Canaanites always in the land of Canaan? <laughs> the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. It belongs to someone else, but don't worry about that right now. It will be yours. And by the way, this whole switcheroo is justified because Ham looked at his dad's penis. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he went on toward the hills east of Bethel, and pitched his tent. Not a euphemism. Guys, it's not, no, it's not a euphemism. Guys, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. Ai is not artificial intelligence. It also might be pronounced A. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continue toward Negev. Now, there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt 
to live there for a while because the famine was severe. Don't go to Egypt! <laughs> Abram, don't go to Egypt! As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are, and that's why I'm still with you, because you're not giving me any kids, and, you know, that's kind of like the first thing. I want kids. I want sons, essentially, and then some daughters, but I want sons, and you're useless that way, but you're very beautiful, so I'm keeping you around. It doesn't say that. I'm painting Abram to be a bit of a misogynistic chauvinist, but I don't know why I'm getting that vibe. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. I want to also make note of this, that culturally, Abram is aware that when a group of people want the wife of another group of people, they kill the man, and they take the wife because she's very beautiful. I'm assuming they don't just like put her in a house and look at her sometimes. I'm guessing they would have their way with her. That's obnoxious. I think anybody in this day and age, if they were, were to hear that that's happening somewhere in the world, they would post on Instagram about it. They would say, oh, we're, we're all posting yellow dot, and that represents don't let the people of this place take someone else's wife, kill the man, and then have their way with the wife. It's an atrocity, and the UN would definitely get involved. But the Egyptians are probably gonna do this. What I wanna believe is that Abram and his nation the nation of Israel, is above this kind of behavior. I'm going to be so disappointed if later on, somewhere in the Bible, the Lord says to these people that they can kill all the men and take the women for themselves. My second question is, if they think Sarai is his sister, are they still going to like try to get with her? <laughs> like... They're not going to kill Abram, but is he also being like, and bang them. Let them try to woo you. Like, you're my sister. Yeah, sure. Go out on that date. She's barren. But yeah, enjoy. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that she was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. And she was taken into his palace. So beautiful. This is... Like, have you ever seen someone so beautiful? You're like, right now, go see the king. He treated Abram well for her sake. And Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, man, men servants and maid servants, and camels. What happened when she was taken into Pharaoh's palace? What is Pharaoh doing with her? Just like, nice, that's a pretty woman. Now she's good looking. Thanks, guys. Send her back to her brother now. No, thanks, guys. That's it. All I needed to do is just take a gander. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarai. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? When did that come up? Sorry. Actually, Abram's my husband. That's why you have gonorrhea. Why did you say she is my sister? So I took her to be my wife. <laughs> okay. This is what's happening. Now, we can't say that God is condoning any of this. We don't have the Ten Commandments, so we don't know if lying is wrong yet. God might not condone that he lies and lets her go and bang the Pharaoh. Now then, here is your wife. Take her back. Get rid of her. Get, I, she's gross. She's, uh, I, don't want, I don't want her anymore. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. So what that reads like to me, and I'm not a Bible scholar, I'm just reading the words that are on the page. When there was a famine, Abram popped over to Egypt, hoard his wife out to the Pharaoh, got a bunch of livestock, and then vamoosed, used his wife to get a bunch of men servants and maid servants, by the way, I'm not sure if he's paying them. Camels, donkeys, they're all in the same list. So I'm not sure if we're supposed to look at men servants and maid servants as people, but they're in, they're within, they're, it's like donkeys, people, camels. So he acquired more people 
and then took off. It's smart, Abram, but is it good? Like, is it kind to your wife? Is it moral? Uh, I'm not sold on that. But anyway, that's chapter 12. It's a little bit more salacious than you may have thought chapter 12 would be. This is what happens when you read the Bible. It's actually a pretty fascinating book. If you're enjoying this, guys, subscribe. I always say that. Ring the bell so an angel gets its wings. And come on back for chapter 13, where I'm sure there will be more drama in the history of Abram's nation. Whatever that's going to be. It's Israel. I already said that. I'm Spoiler alert. Uh, thanks for joining me. And... Have a blessed evening. <music>